can get started. My name is Brandon Moore, and I'll be one of the presenters today. And uh, I'll be asking a bunch of you guys for questions and feedback and input. And so please treat it like an open forum. Um, due to weather, I imagine we're going to have people coming in and out. We are expecting close to 30 plus, so they may trickle here or there or whatever. So we'll just kind of roll with that as it happens. But what I'd like to do really quick, just so we kind of get to know each other, um, one, I'd like to just kind of say what's your name, what industry or business that you're from, and then also uh, just a little bit of your experience about Atlas, if that's all right, just so we can kind of get a flavor for uh, kind of what's going on, basically. So I'll start. Brandon Moore, I actually live in Utah, but I, I live in Salida, Colorado, which is actually the name of Atlas is spelled, Salida spelled backwards, and then we kind of created an acronym for it, but technically that's where we lived. I lived for about nine years there, and uh, that's where this whole kind of business grew out of, just the center of Colorado right there, just kind of out of a little town, so kind of fun. But uh, I have four kids, I live in Utah, and I've been with Atlas since about 2001. Kind of for quite a while there, so I've, I've got some ideas and some things that we can hope and share, but our goal is to kind of help as much as we can. Any sort of questions you guys have, that's what we'd like to do already. Awesome. Shannon, can I uh, have you? And then we'll just kind of go around the rows right here real quick. Definitely. My name's Shannon Moore. I'm Brandon's sister. I'm also up from northern Utah, and I help work for Atlas. I do little projects, or I help come with trainings, so come help with trainings, excuse me. <laughs> she's actually working on part of the user guide as well, and so she's she's kind of like my secretary in a way. She just does tons of different things, so don't let her fool you. She might be like, I don't know what I'm doing. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> she's, she's doing good. Awesome. I'm Eric Roth with uh, Denver Dispensary River Marijuana Center, and uh, we have Atalus, and uh, from from Denver, always been here, here to learn more about the system so we can take full advantage of it. So. Awesome, awesome. You're going to have to re-remind me of your names, but we'll we'll kind of fake it, all righty? And I'm Kate, and I actually went to an Atlas training class last year and ended up helping teach it. So I'm back. Two hours. <laughs> trying to be the same, and I'm also from the Giving Tree of Denver, so I'm personally working with NITS and all the same headaches as a lot of you centers, so if you have any questions as far as that goes, I will help you to the best of my ability. I've made every mistake, so I know how to fix it. <laughs> So I'm going to just brag on Kate for just a minute. Literally, it was last April, and we did a training, and we're like, hey, does anybody want to kind of show how they use it? And we, she ended up coming up, and she ran with it probably for an hour and a half, two hours. And she's like, here, you do this and this. It was so funny because she's like, okay, let me show you. how. You, here's how you do the homie hookup. And the, it was really fun. Like, uh, really, really, I enjoyed it. And so I'm excited to have Kate back with us. So Kate will definitely have you in the driver's seat at some point today, okay? Good, good. Awesome. My name is uh, Randy Mills. I am from the Kind Man Dispensary, and I'm actually one of the growers in there, and it, your work is very new to me. And uh, I'm just looking forward to getting to know as much about Atlas as I can. So, um, Salida is actually one of my favorite towns. It's in the <laughs> it's in <a> spot. <laughs> it's, it, I like it a lot. I, I actually I graduated from college, and I went out there to be a river guide because the Arkansas River flows right through there, and so that's what brought me to Salido is a little bit of paddling and a little bit of rafting. And so. I did that for a few years as well. Oh, nice, that's nice. Simple. What was that? That's so cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Browns Canyon, Royal Gorge, running all those the rivers. That was good, good stuff. Plus, look, old school Monarch logo, right? <laughs> it's a ski resort up there. Okay, go ahead. I'm brand new to Atlas and the cannabis industry. Okay, okay, great. Just to suck it all out. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Carol, where are you from? Metro. Okay, perfect, perfect. I'm Sharon. I'm from New Age Medical, and I'm just looking forward to Atlas today. Okay, perfect. And you're from New Age? New Age. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. My name's Heather Ricardo. Um, I actually do the bookkeeping for New Age Medical. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we haven't used any of it. I just sat down to see, so I have very minimal exposure, but very interested in its capabilities. Okay. Great. Great. Well, our goal is uh, over the three-day period is kind of to introduce you, answer any questions, and try to help the ball get rolling. Okay. We won't answer every single question. We'll try to just 
our goal is to give you concepts and theory instead of like step one, step two, because it changes for every industry. That's process versus principle. Okay, so we'll we'll teach you principles and concepts and get you going in there. So you're like, so you're not afraid to touch and make every mistake in the book. It's okay. Like it it won't blow up on you. And so that's actually very fun. Awesome. Let's go back here. Uh, it's actually double. Uh, the vaccine users say I don't know how hard it was for me when I just tried using the oil. Oh my god, I couldn't remember anything, but um, it's pretty simple. Just gonna go through. Mm -hmm. We'll take that. Yeah. That's fine. That's all good. <laughs> awesome. And what was the name? Alina. 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 Okay. Uh, my name is Blake. I'm with uh, M&M Pool and Concrete Specialist. Oh, uh, perfect. Uh, just hired me on to expand and grow their business. Uh, this is actually my first week um, trying to get integrated in their business and see how I can uh, you know, utilize this to save the cost and uh, track all of our spending. <clears throat> so they've uh, suggested that I show up today. And get in there. Awesome. Tell Drew hi from me. I, okay. Drew and I, we go way back. Yeah. <laughs> Drew's the owner of uh, M&M Pool Specialist. They, they do pool retiling and surfacing and all that kind of stuff. And so they use it more as a service industry type industry. Perfect. Good stuff. My name is Lisa Sanchez, Busy Bee Accounting Service. Um, I'm going to be doing the bookkeeping for at-home remedies. Okay. Okay. And so I'm brand new to this. I haven't seen anything about it. I don't know nothing about it. So. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. We'll take any, any level that you want to throw at us. No problem. We'll start. We'll kind of start it out, and then as we get going, we'll get we'll get it going faster and faster. I promise I won't jump you right into the middle of <laughs> the hardest thing, okay? Perfect. From Busy Bees, huh? Okay, awesome. Okay, perfect, perfect. Great. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. I'm Anita Casillas, and we're from the Connect for Dispensary Wholesale. Awesome. And Anita, I remember seeing you back in April as well. That's awesome. Good, good. My name is Cora Martinez from the Connect also. The back of the house, basically all the PO intake and inventory. Um trying to learn the the billing part or um, the payables, part. sure. Yeah. And trying to learn the payroll and all that. Okay, okay, great. Well we have some good people who know some payroll in here too, okay? So we'll we'll make some good connections for you. Awesome. In the back there. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm the brother of Dave, who also a member of Adler along with Brian, and I've been with him since we started back in 2000, and I do all the billing and the marketing and do whatever they want me to do. And thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you all for coming for sure. David, he has a cochlear implant. He, he is deaf. And uh, he reads lips very well. But if you if you talk to him, just kind of make sure you're facing him, and he can read your lips pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So David is actually a master Atlas user. He has done thousands and thousands of expenses. He does all of our invoicing and billing. He does tons and tons of stuff in there. So David is a great asset to Atlas, and uh, I'll, I'll brag on him a little bit later as we get going. Perfect. Who's that young lady back there? I'm Cherry. I with Fremont County Cannabis as well as I consult for Atlas. Um, I help student branding in many different ways, whatever they need. And I help David with a lot of the receivables and other technical support, just kind of a whole bunch of different stuff. Perfect. Sherry O might be, uh, we call her Sherry O. Her last name is Olin, and uh, we just, it's Sherry O. So. <laughs> But uh, she will probably be up here driving, and especially as we get towards payroll and time cards and some of these different pieces, we'll have Sherry up here kind of helping out. And um, At one point, she was running an office that had close to 100 people that were clocking in and out, being paid commissions and all sorts of different things. And she was the office manager helping to run all of the payroll stuff through there. So she has walked the walk many, many a times there. So awesome, awesome. This. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll give you a login in just one second. What we're going to do, just to kind of give you an idea, is uh, we'll kind of just do a brief introduction, and then once we get going, we'll let you guys all log in, and so we can all kind of play in, in some play sites and whatnot, all right? Awesome. Uh, 
Really quick, Shannon, there's a number of folks online. We're not going to do all the introductions there, but we have a number of folks that are also online, so we might get some random comments every once in a while, people chiming in through the chat box, and they might be like, hey, what about this? And so we might actually be responding to some of those as well. Okay. And just a comment in the way of the people online, they would love to hear what you're saying, but if you could speak up a little bit, it's hard to hear through the mic. So if you make a comment, you can just speak up a little bit. That'd be helpful. Thank awesome. you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Uh, first off, we were asked, how do I even get to this page right here type thing, okay? So inside of Atlas, the, what I wanted to kind of do is I'm going to kind of show you a small little graphic here, okay? So basically, this little graphic right here shows a few of the co core concepts of Atlas as far as like what's going on and what's happening. We have basically 12 main players that kind of will interact. How many of you guys like stories and movies? You guys media folk? Okay, what's, what's a favorite movie? Okay, the new one? No. No, the old one. Okay, the classic one. Okay, the classic one with the little rabbit and stuff. Okay, so uh, basically what happens is, what, what I'm trying to do is kind of introduce this, if that makes sense. But if you can start think of characters and how they relate and interact, it creates these things called relationships, okay? So a character creates a relationship. Alice in Wonderland, she's chasing that little bunny all over the place. It's almost like her little virtual guide. She gets lost, meets the Cheshire cat, etc., etc. But she's constantly kind of seeing this rabbit, and it's kind of like her, almost this, her feeder to bring her through the rest of the story in a way, okay? It creates a relationship. It becomes characters. What we do inside of Atlas is we actually have 12 main characters, okay? I'm going to actually grab my marker out, and this is just kind of the introduction, if you will. But uh, basically, each one of these sections right here are one of our 12 customers. Let's have somebody make a quick comment. What would your customers be? <laughs> Kate, what do you think? What are your customers? A member or a non-member? What do you mean, like? Yeah, yeah, just, just kind of in general. Your patients. A lot of you guys have actually taken the word customer and changed it to a thing called patient. That's called a corp-wide setting. So a corp-wide setting, what it does is it's virtually like smoke and mirrors. We say, cool, we'll run it under the customer section, but we'll let you call it whatever you darn well want. Okay? So we have customers. This is kind of who you sell your products and services to. Invoices. It's another one of the main pieces of the puzzle right here. Okay? Um, invoices. What does that sound like? What do you think? Randy. Um, Randy. That's how you track your track everything that you do. Awesome. That's products and services going out. That's money is coming in. Okay, that's that's your invoices, whether it's services, you're doing cool stuff, or whether you've got somebody in and they're getting something, an, in, an engraving on a, a case or something like that. Those are all services or products type things, okay? Awesome. What is quotes? What would that be? David, what's a quote? Okay. Okay. An estimate, a bid or saved shopping cart, those are all kind of what we call quotes. They're one of the main players. And basically, the, the nice thing about quotes is, is they are a great training ground. So instead of actually doing invoices where you're dealing with real monies and real stuff like this, if you're brand new, one of the best places to practice is actually in the quotes section because you can go and go and go and go and go, and it really doesn't ever affect inventory. But it can still be tied to customers and all the different pieces like that. Cool. Parts and general inventory. Awesome. Who could tell me a little bit about that? Can you remind Anita, right? Me? Yeah. Yes. What would be your general inventory items, your parts? Everything that Cora puts in. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that's purchased outside of the business. Okay. Inventory to sell. Inventory to sell. This also includes labors and services, okay? So like what we call unlimited items. So, for instance, on um, cool guys, they're going to be selling tiling and coping and all this kind of and plaster and this kind of stuff. They're going to set up one little item and they're going to use it over and over and over again. We call that an unlimited item. Okay, it's not necessarily a perfect quantity. Like, say, for instance, those hot tamales. Once I eat them all gone, that's my inventory is shrinking or, or diminishing. Okay, that's what we call a monitoring of quantity. But these are your your items. The word parts. A lot of you guys probably don't even see that word in your system. That's another corp-wide setting, and we allow you to name it kind of whatever you want. MMJ items, 
pool supplies, et cetera, et cetera, you know, your widgets, whatever. So we allow you to do that. Okay, another one of the main 12 are stock units. What would a stock unit be? Okay, okay, great, great. Um, the interesting thing about stock units is this thing called serialized inventory. Where Atlas kind of came from, just to give you a little history, is we came from the used car dealership industry and trailers and toppers and RVs and all that kind of stuff. So our stock units, they were our big ticket items. 5,000 bucks a pop, 30,000 bucks a pop, you know, 50,000 bucks a pop. They were single items and we had to track individual serial numbers, VIN numbers. Uh, we added outside repairs. We did internal ticketing. They're kind of like a, an entity all of itself. That's kind of where we had actually started. It's a thing called stock units, okay? So for instance, jewelry or guns or anything like that, those would be kind of a serialized unit. It's not, you're not just going to put them in a little bin and then just sell them out dime a dozen. They're individual, okay? Awesome. Elements of time and scheduling. Sherry O, what's elements of time? Um, it's our built-in calendar. Okay. You can track a phenomenal amount of things on your calendar. Um, I use it personally for consulting with Atlas. I use it for the company that I take care of. I document when their payroll taxes are due, their quarterlies are due. Many different things that kind of help owners as well as head management. Um, because a lot of times you find they don't know when those due dates are, and I just like to make sure they do. Um, so I utilize the elements of time in that fashion um, to communicate with the owners and management and to document time-sensitive dates that they need to know about the such. Perfect, perfect. Just so you guys can see, as I start circling these little entities, I'd like to draw your attention over to this little graphic right here, okay? So there's a bunch of different levels that things happen in the Atlas world. When we start talking about your patients, your customers, your students, your whatever, okay, they technically are in the group level. Each one of these things, as I circle them, are in your groups, okay? When you log in, we don't know where you're coming from. Are you in the Denver area? Are you in Texas? Are you in Arkansas? Are you wherever, okay? Eventually, you have to kind of filter yourself in so we know which worlds you're dealing with, okay? Are you in the Connect? Are you with... The Giving Tree, are you with Denver Dispensary, are you with et cetera, et cetera, okay? Like, we have to kind of know which world you're kind of coming into. So if there's tons of little users out there, eventually through a login, we get you into your world. Worlds are divided into locations, and locations can be as deep as we want to go, okay? There's a client that we have that's back east, and they have 40-plus locations that they're dealing with. So their, their model is stacked very high, if that makes sense, okay? Instead of just a single level, think of it kind of like a high-rise building or something, okay? Those, that's on your location level. <laughs> Once we get into the groups, that's what we're kind of just doing right in here as far as introducing some of the key concepts and core players, and then we'll kind of get started from there, okay? Awesome. So the next one that we've got is this little thing called employee users. Who can say what an employee user might be? That's how the people you allow to use the system. Correct, correct, okay? That's people you might be paying, and it's also people who have permissions. So the important thing about a user is they're able to kind of transverse all of these different places, if that makes sense, okay? They can move. Another cool thing is, guess what? If we actually had users, what if we had users here, and they actually wanted to be connected to this world, and then also connected to this world over here? Do you think a user could do that? Absolutely, okay? We've, we've tried to design it so that users are bigger than businesses. And so if you want, if you, got, you guys like Star Wars at all? Anyway, they have tons of spaceships, and they go from planet to planet to planet, okay? The planets don't physically move. The planets are the planets, but the spaceships and, and the, the different people, they are able to transverse and go across those different connections. So we try to make it so that users technically could be bigger than a world or a corporation, okay? Awesome. So... I want to show you this next one right here, vendors, and I wanted to also do this. This is kind of a little bit funky, but I wanted to kind of put a superstructure around this particular one. Vendors and employee users are technically stored in the exact same table, okay? The main difference is we pay or get POs from vendors, but eventually we probably have to pay somebody. 
Well, guess what? We also have to pay employees if we're doing payroll. And so what we do is we put them in the same table, and then they just get a little flag. And the little flag says, do I have permissions or do I not have permissions? Kind of do I have access to move around and do something, or am I just a static piece? But eventually, all of these things right here get connected to these things right here, which are some other pieces of the puzzle. Okay. So a PO, what's a PO? Who can help me out there? Purchase order. Okay, a purchase order. Sometimes also people will call them production order, depending on if they're building and making and doing things like that. Inside of Atlas, we use a PO as an inventory tool. So what this allows us to do is basically we can say, so your outgoing side is your invoices, right? Selling stuff out, selling stuff out. Your incoming side is your POs. However, we also use POs to update quantities. We also use POs to do things called recipe and builds. Like if we're taking some of this, some of this, and we're combining it together and making something, we'll use a PO. We use POs are multifunctional inside of Atlas. So it's not just, hey, I'm getting five of these little items from somebody. But it, it is a, a cool little piece of the puzzle. Okay? Expense receipts. I'm going to ask David because he does a ton of this. David, can you tell me what an expense receipt is? Okay, perfect. So you can take it and you can pay for something. It's money's going out of your out of your bank usually, okay? So is that payroll? Is it a vendor? Is it a payable? Is it a lights? You know, like electricity, internet, et cetera, et cetera. Is it lunch? Like, those are all what we would call expenses, okay? One of the most flexible pieces is actually expenses. Expenses can actually hold other expenses. So say, for instance, I was paying um, on account. Say I got a credit card, and I go and I buy some gas, and then I buy some food, and then I buy some of this, and then I want to turn this all in and get reimbursed for it, okay? So an expense receipt actually allows you to record all these little subs that are going out, and then I can put them all together and pay one little payment out to them. Like, it actually allows stacking within that particular group, okay? So each little group kind of has its own little methodology, if you will, okay? Awesome. I'm going to skip banks. Banks is actually not one of the main 12. It actually connects this. So an expense is going out. So let's say money going out. A deposit is money coming in, okay? And together, they create, we use a bank to kind of create that connection. Does that make sense how that works? Mm -hmm. Now, technically, banks exist outside of your model, and you can have as many as you want, okay? If you start doing expenses and deposits, you have to have at least one in order to kind of make that connection, but it's unlimited. Literally, if you had five banks, 10 banks, 50 banks, it doesn't make a bit of difference, and you would just tie the expenses and deposits between them. You could even do transfers, which then would allow kind of interactions and connections through that type of stuff, okay? So banks technically kind of exist kind of outside of the model, but they're very important so that we can bring it all together. Awesome. Any other questions on deposits? One thing that I would mention on deposits is often money just doesn't fall out of the sky. It comes from somewhere, right? These guys right here on purpose, they're kind of across from each other. This is where your money's come from, okay? Your invoice payments. So you go sell something, and boom, here's 100 bucks. You go sell something else, and here's a couple other $100. Well, what you do is you gather that all together, and then you put it in the bank, okay? So invoices virtually feed the deposit cycle. That's kind of the, the ideal flow of that. What we do is we just let the counter people, whether it's your bud tenders or people who are actually handling money or whatever's going on, they're making invoices, and they're collecting that money, and it's virtually going into a small little pool, a.k.a. a little cash register or a envelope or a safe or whatever, okay? Then eventually, if you're using a bank, and some of you guys don't even use banks just because of some of the regulations, but eventually that, that money gets pushed out that direction, okay? But that's kind of your money. That's the ideal flow is right there. Okay, the last one of the 12 is user-maintained balance sheet items. Anybody got any comments on that one? Definitely a little deeper, all righty? See a couple of smiles, kind of like, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Sherio, what's, what is a user-maintained balance sheet item, and why would it be a player? Why would it be one of our groups? Um, for your sales staff. 
Okay, okay, that's you great. You can track your sales tax that uh, is due at the end of every month, and you also want to document your expense paid out. Um, as everybody knows, you customarily get a discount when you pay in time with fashion, so there's always going to be an offset. Um, compared to what your sales tax is at the end of the month and what you pay. Um, you have to track that as a user maintained balance sheet item um, because it does reflect over um, with your income expenses and everything, sales tax, so. Okay, awesome. Um, just so you guys know, how many of you guys are into finances, like pretty deep into that kind of side, okay? Once you get into the financial part of it, what happens is, is eventually you're going to want a thing called a balance sheet, okay? Which is virtually a snapshot in time. Did I get everything recorded, okay? What happens is, is there's a lot of things that actually happen in your business that aren't part of your inventory. They're not part of your normal utilities or something like this. Say a company vehicle, say a building, say like, okay, those are called assets or say you have an owner who's like, hey, I've got a hundred grand I want to put into your business. Where do you record that? Okay, technically it would hit deposits because it's going to hit your bank, right? But you've got to record it somewhere so it can be part of that puzzle. So anything that's not in the main part of the puzzle goes into a thing called a user maintained balance sheet item. And it's basically a whole other group that you can actually help with financials. And if you're not into financials, go like this. <laughs> Just plug your ears for a second. But it is important. You have to have all these pieces in order to kind of make the things work. Okay? Awesome. So we've kind of covered almost every little teeny piece here except for one little thing right here. This is not one of the main 12. So watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are our 12, 12 main players. Those are the groups. Okay? Within those groups, you can have tons of individuals. Okay? Deposit 17, deposit 18, deposit 460. Like tons and tons of individuals within those groups. Okay? What would the flex grid tie-ins be? It's kind of special. It's kind of special. <laughs> Shannon, I'm going to ask you, what's flex grid tie-in? And this is just general, so you can kind of get an idea, if you will, of like what pieces do we have inside of Atlas that we can kind of play with. I I guess to maybe explain it, I would say flex grid is something you could use with any of those twelve main players, so it can be associated with any of those twelve main, and you can do lots with it. Can create relationships or you can tie things together or add extra notes so it's basically a tool that you could attach to any one of your 12 main players to add extra information okay awesome so flex grid just can't exist and day two we will cover a little bit of flex grid so on the introduction you kind of whoa, whoa, whoa we've already gotten a whole bunch of new verbiage day two we'll cover a little bit of flex grid but flex grid is virtually like a miniature database that you can plug in on top of your other pieces okay so watch this Customers are tied to invoices, so your patient comes in, you sell them something, and then they're tied to items, okay? Those are natural relationships that start existing, okay? What happens if you had a customer who special ordered something, and all of a sudden you have to say, okay, customer, I need to tie you to an item and also to a PO? Well, how does that happen? You might use some flex grip, okay? It's kind of, oh, hold hands. <laughs> I need you guys to be buddies for a second, okay? Or what happens here? Say something random happened in your balance sheet. Somebody gave a whole bunch of money, but then they ended up paying it directly here instead of it even hitting the bank or something. You might want to track these special relationships, and you would use the flex grid as a virtual connector. Okay, that's one of the ways that you can kind of use the flex grid. Okay, it's also really wonderful for collecting data, especially in a grow. You can actually get your sweet leaf, what your buds are producing, things like that. Collect the data, insert them into your individual purchase orders or whatever it is you're using to make create your plants. And then that way you are now knowing what are your best producers, what are the things that are giving you the most waste. And that's wonderful because obviously that's really useful information, especially in the MMJ industry. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So the flex grid, it actually has 15 custom fields that you can have per 12 of your main groups, okay? So what, what she's doing is she's saying, wow, we use FlexGrid all the time on our POs. They're using POs to basically use it to create plants that they're growing for their people, okay? And then they're recording wet weights and dry weights and this and scrap and hash and all these different little things like this. These are fields that Atlas creates automatically, okay? Atlas is a very generic business model, but we give you the power to kind of say, 
man, I need it to do this, or I want to call it this. And we give you those settings and options, and then you're able to kind of virtually kind of tweak it out like that. All right? Cool. I'll go ahead and uh, erase all my drawings. I, I do tend to draw quite a bit. If you like it or don't like it, just let me know, and we'll <laughs> kind of go from there.